What's up guys? So in this video we're going to be covering the Malak events light side and dark side battles. I did this on the first release for my test account and a couple of patrons but I've just done it again this time for my own main account on the second run. I'll show you the full runs and I'll give you some commentary breaking down what needs to be done and any necessary mod advice. Speaking of mods, this video is being brought to you by Peenpo, your one-stop swagger mod service by the mod father himself. If you're one of the many players who doesn't understand mods or doesn't have the time or interest to sort them out, Peenpo can do it for you. He offers a full inventory cleanup, will level them and sort out your farming goals going forward. He'll also sort out loadouts for whatever game modes you want and gives you a big boost in your Grand Arena and Territory War performances. So it's video time, let's do this! Okay, first off, we'll go straight into the light side battle. This is the one that people tend to struggle with more. Um, this is totally built around armor shred. That's what we got to focus on with Zalba. Um, and th there are a few things that can go wrong. The RNG can like kick you in the nuts sometimes. I like to get blind on on the first attempt here. Then we're going to have to do a move that preferably doesn't call Zalba. So we, we just use a heal. Now we use a special. Boom. Armor Shred is on. Now, most people will say get four on and you're fine. I think it's much, much better to get five. I really do think five is, is the best option because if you go for four, um, if you don't hit really hard or you don't quite have the, you know, the right turn order, the characters, um, you, you don't have the optimal person attacking first, basically, then, then things can go wrong. Um, so I don't really like to mess with four. Five is just a much, much safer option. Now what we're going to do, we need to control him, prevent him getting to enrage. So what we're going to do, we're going to beat up the droids. Every time we kill the droids, he's going to lose stacks towards his enrage. Once he hits 30, he's going to get there and it's going to be a much, much bigger problem. Now Zal sorry not Zalbar, uh, Mission does some serious serious damage so I often like to call Zalbar because Mission will assist him anyway and that's extra damage when we're taking out these droids. You can if you really want to or you need to, you can put an armor shred on the droids because it stays there when they revive which makes it a lot easier to kill them and control the enrage counter. I don't really waste time with it personally. I think my team are they're just about strong enough. I don't have god mods on these characters. Most of them are five dot mods. Um, there's no crazy speeds on my characters. There's no crazy offense secondaries or anything like that. Um, so it is doable without being a complete whale. Although some people still like to accuse me of being one despite not spending money. There we go. All right, we're going to keep focusing on this for now. We are going to start attacking the Jedi on the side because we need to take them out to prevent Malak actually absorbing them. But you don't want to do it too quickly. You want to really focus on getting some shreds on first. And then you're really going to want to focus on just getting your team at the right kind of the, the right the right spot because you you have to have the right turns go in and you have to have the right amount of shreds. It's it's a whole thing. It can get quite annoying. Um, and you don't want you really really don't want to focus too much with Revan, especially if Zalbar's coming up with his armor shred and then you end up you know sticking it on the wrong person or the wrong droid, we should say. Right, see, we, we got no choice to attack, so here we're going to attack one of the Jedi. I like to go with this one first. We don't want him having any crit immunity. That's going to make uh, a whole new layer of problems when we come down to actually attacking Malak at the end. All right, back to the droids. One thing you have to be very, very careful about, and I'll point this out, a lot of people make this mistake. They start attacking the Jedi, they wear their health down, um, but then they end up hurting Malak too much and he will absorb the Jedi that's closest to death. So he'll gain that buff. Um, so we really do want to make sure we kill this Jedi before his health hits that like 50% point and he absorbs him. Um, yeah, so that, that's one of the mistakes people make. They, they often wear down a Jedi. Um, they, they, they end up hitting Malak too much. He absorbs that one and then you're going to really kind of like do no damage. So I, that's one of the times I like to save focus with Revan. Uh, if, if we end up with no droids around, then I will aim at one of the Jedi and kind of get all the damage going there for a second. Right, I think we'll, we'll probably kill this one off. Getting a little low on health and, and Malak's getting a little bit too close to that 50% point for, for my own personal comfort. Alright, he's taunting, so let's go and aim focus on one of the side droids. Uh, we'll go for this one, he's got a bit more, a bit more about him. And that'll call mission. 
if, 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 if possible, uh, getting fear on mission or you know using blind on on on, on Malik will will actually save you that little bit more damage when Zalba has to attack because obviously she's going to assist him and it comes in really really handy if if that's the case for her when you're going to put the armor shred onto onto Malik but a lot of time it just doesn't work out for me so I, I don't stress about it too much. I've never needed to have it done. I always do it on the opening setup, but um, it's, it's not something that's vital. It's just handy if you can time it that way. Although if he ends up absorbing the tenacity one on the far right there, that's never going to happen anyway. So you're going to end up having to do damage to him to prevent it. And then Malik's so quick by that point, it's often passed anyway. Right, carry on attacking these. Uh, as for which Jedi we'd focus on next, it, it's it's kind of preference. I often I often don't mind if he absorbs the the crit damage one. It doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference. The ones I don't like him having uh, are, are usually the, the tenacity one and then the um, which he just took unfortunately um, and the the crit immunity one. But even though he's got that, we, we should still be fine. Should. All right, let's let's go and wear out one of these. Now, we, what we don't want to do, we don't want to rush down the third one. Because if we rush down the third one and then we end up having to hit Malak a few times, he's going to absorb the fourth one and we've got no control about when we have to go full in on him. I like to have all five armor shreds on, if possible, um, before I finish off those last Jedi and kind of activate the final showdown. Get that off. Sometimes it can be really, really annoying. You're like one turn from getting your last armor shred on Malak, and the turn order will just get a little bit thrown off, and Zalbar will have to use his like final attack before just hitting Malak. Then he ends up feared, and that delays things. Or he'll end up stunning Zalbar, which can be a little bit annoying right when you don't have a move that can actually clear it. Um, th th those, those are kind of little roadblocks you run into. That's kind of where the RNG will play into things a little bit. But uh, generally, as long as you're you're following this method, getting those five armor shreds on, then you're 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 gonna do all right. I think I've only ever lost once with five armor shreds, um, and that was just some terrible gameplay on my part. I really wasn't paying attention. I ended up attacking with the wrong move, ended up getting fear on too many characters right at the start, and yeah, I, I knew immediately. I was like, oh, I've screwed this. I've got to have to do this again. But yeah, as, as long as you're you're actually concentrating and not. And not throwing too many temper tantrums you should be fine we're very very close to going all in you can see now i'm starting to wear down both of these jedi i want to get them in, into that sweet spot for the for the fifth armor shred because if, if we're really really lucky that fifth armor shred will hit onto malik and we will take out both of the jedi at the same time it, it doesn't regularly happen but um if, if your zalbar in particular is quite strong then it can that's actually a strategy that we will we will work into the dark side event which i'll be covering next i'll put a timestamp in the bottom so if you've already beat one of these missions you don't have to waste time watching both of them all right here we go fifth shred unfortunately he ended up draining um that that's that's the problem with mission assist that little bit of extra damage ends up but we will finish off that last jedi and then we're gonna lay the smack down on malik all right down it goes here we go all right Use that little move and start beating down on Malak. I really, really do like with, with Jolie to call Zalbar because that in turn, as long as she's not feared, will call Mission as well. And you get, you're getting like a, a double tap out for your money. Unfortunately, she's feared there. But we, we should still be fine. Try to save the heal if you can because he will try and take Zalbar out and that's going to take out one of your assists. Uh, just pass that to probably at this point Julie. No, I, I passed it to Basla apparently. All right, give that to Mission. She hits like a truck, so I like to get that, that extra crit chance to her and that offense up. Make sure she's really going to be dealing damage. All right, we'll call Zalba because that will call Mission. That's even more damage. As you can see, she's the one doing doing the work here. And there you have it. We've taken Malak out, nice and smooth, nice and comfortable. So if you're having trouble. That's the strategy that I've used from from day one. Um, I, I believe I unlocked this this event within 
30 or so minutes of it very first appearing on, on the test account of admittedly much better mods, much stronger characters there. Here, I'm quite a few of these characters are just 12.0 and their mods, I mean, the speeds are like plus 56 or something there. They're not great sets. Now, this is how you do the dark side battle. It's much, much easier. It's all about getting as much of the bonus ferocity as we can on Daft Revan. And the way we're gonna do that is killing stuff. Quite simple, right? I like to do that first, get exposed, speed up taking down these, these really annoying droids. A lot of the time, we're pretty much just going to be using basic here. You really don't use much of the specials. The specials, they all seem to pretty much AoE for all of these characters. And the problem with that is we end up hurting Malak. And he's going to start draining the, the side Jedi a lot quicker than we want him to. Because really, we don't want him to at all. All right, just keep beating on these. The beauty of using Revan's basic as well is we're going to put buff immunity on Malak. He's not going to taunt. It's never going to be a problem. Sometimes it, it, it can be really, really annoying, actually, and you'll end up doing it like so, and he doesn't get buff immunity, and then we're going to end up having to hit him later on, which is why it's really preferable that we're not using any AoE, because that's just additional damage that we really don't want him taking yet. As you can see, we've got three of those bonus ferocity on top of our usual 10 now. I was about to say five, and it changed. And that's one of those occasions where we have to hit him. Early on, that's not a huge problem, but later on when we've got like 30 bonus stacks of uh, ferocity, that can be a bit of a problem. It'll do quite large damage. And then he's going to end up absorbing uh, that crit immunity one, which we really don't want him having. All right, keep beating on these side droids. Once we get to a, a decent kind of point on that bonus ferocity, maybe 20, 30, uh, we're going to start using Revan like so to begin wearing down these side Jedi. We want them into red, um, but we need to be really careful of him because as that ferocity stacks, he's going to be hitting a lot harder. Um, so often I will take them into yellow and then I'll use the, the other characters to whittle them down into red. All right, it's going quite well at the moment. You'll probably find Calf will die. Calf will die and sometimes HK will die with this as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Getting three star doesn't make any difference to getting one star. Um, and this is the easy method. All right, what are we up to? About 18 on those bonus stacks there. And we don't want to hit Malak, so we'll keep beating on this guy because this is the, the primary Jedi to kill. Although we're not actually going to kill him. Like I said, we're going to take him down to red. All right, he's in yellow at the moment. Uh, I could probably get away with one more Revan hit on there. Let's deal with these droids again. Keep Malak controlled. Keep that ferocity stacking. It'd be nice if it stacked on Bastila too, but it doesn't. You just get you just get her normal one. I'll right, we'll take him out again. All right, one more. Yeah, just about. A any more ferocity and we would have actually killed him there. We don't want that to happen just yet. Keep the setup going. And don't panic. Don't panic. If, if, if Malik just keeps attacking uh, Revan, that can happen. I've had it before where he attacked him like non-stop for about two minutes. Didn't seem to target anybody else. Um, I've never actually seen him kill Darth Revan, so it, it's not something to really panic about. Let's start taking out one of those other Jedi in a second. Yeah, Calf's dead. Happens regularly. Just, just don't worry about it. Calf brings nothing to this battle anyway. Absolutely nothing. He's just there. He's, he's pretty much just there to grief you, so you have to have him in order to take part. Doesn't actually help whatsoever. I'm going to start wearing out this other Jedi in a moment. Um, a lot of people say, our oh, 30 stacks is fine. Some people will push it all the way to like 60. Um, I can't even remember what I did in this video. I think I probably played it safe and got it fairly high. So my, my Revan doesn't have great mods by most Revan standards. I believe his, his speed's about 128 and he's 12.3. I don't have the four or fifth piece. Um, I'm not even remotely close to the sixth piece to take him to gear 13. I didn't have Malak first time around, so no real need to, to massively invest in this team because I ended up using Darth Revan as a part of my arena team and not actually as lead. All right, I think we might hit the fourth one and play it safe there if I at this point, with this many stacks, that yellow one's going to be a little bit risky. Right, let's wear him down with Candorous, get him into red. Always keep killing the droids while the other guys, and girl, wear down these guys into red. Oh, okay, Bastler's hitting a little bit hard at this point too. Uh, hit the droid. What we're actually going to do in a moment is use the AoE shock, and it's going to kill all of the Jedi at once. Boom! 
like so. Now, Malik's getting zero buffs from him. We've got 54 ferocity bonus stacks. And now we can pretty much just basic him to death. But I do like to use this once. Get fear on the side droids. They're not going to get in the way now. And we can just finish off Malik. One more hit should do the job. Boom. Dark side completed. There you go. Now we have Malik. We've got the light side done. We've got the dark side done. Both very, very easy strategies. And I hope this will actually help all of you guys out. Here's the, the last little bit of conversation. The apprentice has learned his final lesson. And Malik is mine. That's what's important, right? So hopefully this guide will help you guys out. And a little note actually about Zalbath, completely forgot to mention it in the footage. The armor shred sticks on a critical hit. So go with four health mods and two crit chance with a crit chance primary on the triangle. It's gonna make things a lot easier. There's also a bit of misinformation I've heard. It, it comes down to the crit immunity absorbing that Malik can do. Don't worry if that does happen. I mean, it's much preferred if it doesn't, but if it does happen, it's not the end of the world and you can still stick armor shred because the move is actually an AOE attack. And if the droids are alive, and as long as you're targeting at Malik, if you hit a crit on the AOE on one of the droids, you're still gonna actually stick Shred to Malik. So don't worry too much about that. I've seen a lot of misinfo saying that if he's got that, then you can't stick Shred. I have tested it, you can. If you've got some six dot mods, I prefer to get them on mission. She's where nearly all the damage is coming from, as you saw in this video. So get a crit chance set and a crit damage set on there. Um, your best like offense primaries and stuff on her. All that would actually be most preferred on her because she constantly attacks. We're, we're focusing on Zalbar's use and she's assisting him. So go with her as your, as your primary mod focus. When it comes to light side battle, patience is key. So just take your time. Don't try to rush it. That's where you'll lose. And then you've got to sit through the whole setup again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, we out of here.